to Uncommon Sense, where we do our best to make it common again. I'm your host, Adrian Alquist. Today, I'm joined with my dad again, Dale Alquist. How are you? Adrian, I'm just great. The better for your asking. Awesome. (laughs) Well, last week, we hinted that we had an exciting episode for you this week, and we were going to talk about the new name for distributism. Is that correct? That's what you announced. That's what we should deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And... uh, and this is the first time we're announcing it verbally. Uh, the people of our of our uh, the members of our society who get the Gilbert magazine will be reading about this in the upcoming issue that is being delivered as we speak. And um, it has uh, amazing articles about this this about distributism and its new name. But let's maybe say the name right now. Or should we say why we need a new name? Okay, yeah, you yeah. tell me. We'll I'll just do we'll it your just way. Wait. I'll draw it out a little longer. Yeah, draw it out. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start with what distributism is because uh, I have a, hot, uh, a likely, I have a suspicion that a lot of people don't know what distributism is and ha- not only not know what it is, but have the wrong impression about it. So I what think, is, yeah. I think that's true. And I think that's one of the reasons we need a new name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. But let's talk about what distributism is. Some is. It's just really bad to it's, say. It's just a bad yeah. name. You can't even say it. And, and its original name was even worse. It was originally called distributivism. And imagine trying to say that a lot. Yeah, it's bad. Trying to, trying to teach it distributivism. Especially at a distributist drinking party saying it. You know, it's When you're distributing drinks. Yeah. So uh, the, the name came from a line in Pope Leo XIII's encyclical uh, Rare 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 Rare. 1891 considered the first encyclical on Catholic social teaching and Pope Leo recognizes the problems of the modern world that are unique to the modern world because of uh, everything's gotten bigger mm-hmm. and more complex uh, and, and inter- he, yeah interconnected yeah, yeah and right. that's so he addresses the problems of both socialism and capitalism. Yes, which, he does. And he, he identifies that capitalism has really created a, what's essentially a slave system, no better than slavery. Wage slavery makes the, the wage slave so dependent on the employer that they really have lost all their rights and uh, their autonomy. Right. And, and that's, that's why Chesterton talks about Hudge and Gudge, which is big government and big business. Right. And that's, that, it goes back to Rare Navarre, actually. Absolutely in a, in a does. Way, yeah. Yep. And what the Pope recognizes is, that is is the solution that's being kicked around. Everybody has already seen some problems with industrial capitalism, the the uh, the in, uh, urban waste and and urban malaise that had taken place, and uh, a huge permanent underclass, and a few very rich individuals. Uh, but the wrong solution, which was being bandied about by all of uh, Western. Uh, Europe and, and the United States was socialism, and uh, and just the, the the Pope recognizes immediately socialism is the wrong solution. The solution is for more workers to become owners, mm-hmm. so that property uh, is more widespread, and that way or people, distributed. Just too, he said justice. <laughs> That's should, where the word comes. Yeah, from. Yeah, he said justice is is something everyone's entitled to. Justice should be distributive. Yeah, that's distributive justice, and that's how Hilaire Belloc and G.K. Chesterton chose the name distributism from the phrase distributive justice in there. It was Belloc <laughs> that came, suggested the name. Everyone at the meeting where the name, name was chosen, and they'd been kicking around a name for re- really, really years. Yeah, they had they had not come up with a name for what it was they were, <laughs> and what it was they represented, uh, and they were trying to put a some title to it when when belloc suggested the name none of them liked it but they all said it was accurate because it's oh yeah distributive justice that's the sense that everyone should have property yeah well they didn't like the name from the beginning yet they continued to defend it and that's been that's what got us to this what is distributism it's the idea of of Catholic social teaching that um, workers should be owners, widespread ownership would provide for more freedom, autonomy, independence, uh, uh, for a more just society. You'd have more economic justice, but more social justice, as it were, because people would be in control of their own lives. Uh, they, they wouldn't be oppressed by big government or by big business because 
the things that affected them, they would have control of. And right. those things would be accountable to them. Uh, and so it was a, a distributism is opposed to social, uh, to, to centralization, uh, and whether it's political or commercial centralization, so that a remote federal government is uh, just as bad as a remote uh, commercial center. I won't say any names, but if I were, I'd say Amazon. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it's about directness, and it's about human dignity, and it's about responsibility. So it puts the family's rights above individual interests and above community interests. Capitalism is about individual interest. Communism or socialism is about community interest. The family is recognizes the basic unit of society, and what serves the family then serves the society as the, as a whole, and that is what the common good is. If the, if the family is strong, then the common good has been supported by mm -hmm. that. That's Great. the idea. That uh, was well put. You took a lot of things that I was maybe going to say, but that, that <laughs> was good. Um, all right. I think we can probably reveal what the name is. And it might be in this title, honestly. So it <laughs> they might already know. So how about you say it? Well, let's talk about the problems <laughs> with the word distributism first. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't put it in the title. <laughs> nah. Let's just let's new have name the, for distributism. the title. Yeah. New, new name for distributism. Okay, good. What... Let me ask you, besides the fact that earlier we couldn't even pronounce it, yeah. what, do, what do you think are the main problems with the word distributism? Well, it, it, it sounds like socialism or communism because it sounds like you're distributing the wealth. And that's, that's what the problems with, with communism is or socialism. Right. Um, and Which that's, means you're taking wealth away from somebody to give it to yeah. somebody else. And to a certain extent, we do do that. We do that with taxes. Taxes. That's what um, taxes are. Yeah. So it's not – but, but – but that's the immediate uh, thinking when you hear distributism. I, I even this is great because I was talking to a friend of mine in college at freshman year. I, I mean, we didn't even know each other very well. It was it was right at the beginning of the year, and I brought up the word distributism, and he said, "See, that just doesn't work." And that's <laughs> what he said to me. And I, I he had no idea what distributism is, but I knew exactly what he was thinking. He was just thinking socialism, right? And I agreed with him that socialism doesn't work. But that's that's the problem. Is it just exactly sounds like socialism? And the other problem with the word distributism is it doesn't suggest the idea of property, exactly, which yeah. is essential. Property ownership is essential to the concept, and the word distributism doesn't contain that word at all. Yeah, and uh, so ownership means responsibility, but it also means autonomy. Uh, Chesterton says this: the the opposite of employment is not unemployment the opposite of employment is independence mm, so it's good. the idea of widespread independence you're not dependent on an employer or on a government handout that you're yeah. actually self-sufficient and self-governing so none of that comes in the word distributism no none of it yeah <laughs> so it's a it's a bad word and we always have to deal with the fact that people are saying well distributism is just socialism it, we hear it over and over again. Yeah. It's so tired. No, it's a response against socialism. Yeah. And and capitalism, but it's a response against socialism. Yeah. So yeah. So so we should we should probably see what we've come up with. Okay. It's gonna be disappointing. <laughs> but it's well, a better we're, word. We're always gonna disappoint people. Remember, if there's something to love, people will hate it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we have come up with a word, and actually when we came up with this word, Adrian was present at the creation. We were sitting around a table having a discussion because we knew we needed a better word. We've been we've been knowing this for years. I, I've been running the Chester Society for almost twenty five years. We've always known that we needed a better word for distribution <laughs> for that word for that word. <laughs> we always have known that, and we've never come up with a word that everyone agreed on. But when we hit on this one, we all said it works. It works on so many levels. Yeah, and the main reason it works is because everybody will recognize what it means immediately when I say it. Yep. Okay. Localism. 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 The idea that... I can hear the cheering. Yeah, yeah. There's, there it is. <laughs> Great yeah. word. Great word. So you, you support local production and local consumption of goods so that t trade doesn't become the king. Uh, tr trade should be the exception, not the rule. 
So the idea is that if things are local, you keep your money local. It doesn't leave the community by giving it to the big corporation where it please and doesn't serve the, the, the community. Or at least, again, that's the exception and not the rule. Right, that's the exception, not the rule. There's, there's some there's some. We don't want to say absolutes and then people are going to jump are on that. Not, but... We're not talking about these absolutes. We're talking about a general tendency. As yeah. Chesterton, when, even Chesterton in, in describing that word, but describing the concept, he says it's a tendency against a tendency. That if we don't do anything to turn the ship It'll just get worse if we if we don't do anything. If we give all our money to the big corporation and we give all our votes to the big government, we lose control of our own lives. It's a tendency against a tendency. So the idea is try to keep your money local, keep the jobs local, uh, promote local history, local culture, local identity, and local freedom. And so uh, the things that that affect you most directly, you should have control of. That's what the word subsidiarity means, which is part of Catholic social teaching. Another difficult word, but yeah. subsidiarity means if if it's if it affects you directly, you should have control of it. Even if something someone else provides it, you should have control of it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so it obviously favors decentralization. It favors directness. And it's obviously opposed to globalism and collectivism. And that's one of the keys. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's nice that you brought up um, a principle of the Catholic Church and Catholic social teaching, which is in line with the Catholic Church because it's an encyclical. Um, uh, it's maybe to correct some of the narratives about distributism that I've recently heard. And there are small narratives because not a lot of people know about distributism. We're hoping to change that to uh, more people knowing about localism. Uh, uh, where people were thinking that distributism, there are certain principles that were against the church or that didn't line up or it had certain ways of thinking that, oh, that's just a top-down thing or something, stuff like that. Well, we have the chance now by naming, by dubbing localism the, the new social economic principle. It's it completely in line with the Catholic church and Catholic social teaching. If there's any principles that pop up that aren't in line with those, it's not part of localism, right? There it is. And it's a, it's a word that already has meaning, and and like everything else, it's it's something that can be abused, but it's a word now that we can start to own, and we can start to use it and start to, uh, you know, g give it the extra meaning that that we want it to have, so that people can understand. We need to fix a broken world, and it's being broken by the fact that the common man and our normal basic rights and self-control and dignity is just being rolled over. The family is being destroyed. The way we start uh, fighting back is to assert our family rights and our local rights and for local communities to, to get a, self of, uh, a sense of autonomy and control of their own lives again. Yeah. And people, you know, they people want to take responsibility for their own lives. That's what freedom is. Self-government is what freedom is. And that's what, you know, democracy is, self-government. But self-government means self-control. You are governing yourself. That means you're controlling yourself. You're not just doing whatever you want. You are actually controlling yourself. And that's the idea is that you will be in control of the things that affect you. People are so frustrated right now by the fact that everything is out of their control. Yep. They can't, they, and they don't know who to blame, who to go to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's because of a giant corporate system where you can only complain to an employee who can't do anything exactly. to help you anyway. You just get frustrated at a person who absolutely is not in control of themselves. You don't know who to go to in the government because there's so many layers of bureaucracy. We have to start taking it back and, and we have to start promoting this idea. Like everything else with, within uh, our, our work and our mission, it is a bottom-up grassroots effort. That's the idea behind the Chesterton Academies, and that's the idea behind localism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. One other thing, too. Yes. What is the most local entity there is? It's good. Let's see. Hmm. All right. Wait, wait. Let me guess. A uh, church. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I Okay. 
a family. Yeah, that <laughs> you and I are a member of the same one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, a church. Yeah. There, and we're also the same member, member of the same local church. But I tell you what, localism, there's nothing more local than the family. It starts with, with what Chesterton calls the tiny kingdom that creates and loves its own citizens. And it starts with that. This is a family-based economy, but a family-based social system. Mm-hmm. And it, the family really is supreme. And everything else should, should serve the family. Uh, and we, we, we live in a society that hates the family. This is the way we start uh, bringing it back by, by really a new social economic idea called localism that starts yeah. with the family. What's, what's great is that there are things that both liberals and conservatives can find appealing in the idea of localism. I mean, there's, there's the, the family aspect for conservatives. There's the, the, um, the fight against the corporate overlords for liberals. I mean, it's, it's, it's there. I'm sure we'll get hate instead from both sides. We'll get hate from both that's sides. Probably, that you're in a good spot like yep. that with, with, when you're in that. So, <laughs> As Jesterson says, when something is too tall and too short and too red and too green, you may be sure it is exactly right. Yeah. That's where that's the place where we want to be. I want to just read a couple of Chesterton quotes to, to <laughs> close right. out with here. Cool. The truth has made us free. The tradition has given to men the sort of liberty they really like. Local customs, individual craftsmanship, variety of self-expression, the presence of personality in production, the dignity of the human will. These are expressed in a thousand things, from hospitality to adventure, from parents instructing their own children to children inventing their own games, from practical jokes to pilgrimages, and from patron saints to pub signs. A wonderful summing up of the idea of localism. One more quote. Um, Two more quotes. The things we vote on are very seldom the things we see and smell and eat and drink and do. They are more and more controlled by vast and vague central forces at once autocratic and anonymous. This is the real modern problem. problem. And uh, it, it, we have been invited to, go- men have been invited to govern everything except themselves. Mm-hmm. Men have been invited to govern everything except themselves. I can go on and on about that, but I want to close close with this with this quote right here. It is not fashionable to say much nowadays of the advantages of the small community. We are told that we must go in for large empires and large ideas. There is one advantage, however, in the small state, the city or the village, which only the willfully blind can overlook. The man who lives in a small community lives in a much larger world. He knows much more of the fierce varieties and uncompromising divergences of men. The reason is obvious. In a large community, we can choose our companions. In a small community, our companions are chosen for us. (laughs) A big society is a society for the promotion of narrowness. It is a machinery for the purpose of guarding the solitary and sensitive individual from all the experience of the bitter and bracing human compromises. It is, in the most literal sense of words, a society for the prevention of Christian knowledge. Small is more beautiful in this case. Smaller is better in this case. Local is better. Where does this line come from, this passage? It comes from one of Chesterton's greatest essays on certain modern writers and the institution of the families from heretics. The most local entity is the family because that's where you have to get along with the people that you don't get to choose. (laughs) Here we are. All right. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, we are very interested, interested to know what you think. So leave a comment saying what you think and why you think it. Uh, Because we really need some feedback on this. This is a new idea, new move. Oh, it's it's, it's a new name. New name for an old movement. Exactly, exactly. And we want to say it's it's a local effort for a global effect. We're working on the subtitle. You can also propose uh, 
you know, a, 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 a slogan. A, a better slogan. slogan. Yeah. A better slogan. Yeah. Oh, and, and as one one of the pr- people we uh, ha- have told uh, this name, she, her, her response was, it's a great name, but if anybody doesn't like the name, they have to give us a better name. They can't just <laughs> say, true. I don't like the name. You have it's to true. give us a better name. Because no name is going to be perfect. That's true. Yep. Words are not perfect. But but you we need a better name then. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's fair. We've long needed a better name for distributism. We are promoting the same idea. We're just trying to give it a better, more recognizable, more immediate name. If you have a better one, hey, let's hear it. But in the meantime, <laughs> this is the one we're going to be uh, promoting. Great, great. Uh, you still have a chance to become a member and uh, w- join us live for the virtual society meeting. It should be the 16th, 7 p.m., and uh, it's going to be Dale and Brandon Vaught talking about the new book that we're releasing, Orthodoxy, the American Translation. We're so, doing nothing but being controversial, changing the name of distributism and then messing with Chesterton's yeah. great book, Orthodoxy. What is What's wrong with yeah. us? Come and yeah. see. So, yeah. So, join it. We have the link in the description or go to chesterton.org slash membership. And until next time, help us to make uncommon sense more common. <laughs>